All right, hello everybody. It is. Whoop, let me get this. Hello, little little camera mix up here. Whoopsies. I'll let Nick introduce us here while I while I <laughs> fix Nick's camera. Well, hello and welcome. You're watching StarCraft II Community Team League Week One. Thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Galligation, and my partner in crime is Wingnut SC. We're here to cast a couple of games for you. Uh, just to give you a, a little bit of an idea of who we are, uh, I'm Nick. I'm Galligation. Uh, Aaron and I have been... Aaron is Wingnut. Uh, we've been casting a few times before. We did the Big Shot Gaming League in Michigan, and we've done uh, a few online shows uh, about a year ago or so. And uh, we've been playing SC2 since it came out. We love the game. We get excited about it. We get excited about casting game and watching uh, just awesome, awesome plays, and we're hoping to bring you some of that tonight. Uh, so, yeah, Aaron, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? I'm Aaron, a.k.a. Wingnut of Wingnut StarCraft. Uh, we are getting into casting StarCraft II Community Team League, where we hope to make this as much about you, the community, as possible. Um, this is really crafted around that, and we really hope to bring that aspect into it. As such, we are part of that community. Um, we've been getting into the casting foray, doing some local events, and found out about this event, and it sounded pretty awesome, so we wanted to be involved. Absolutely. Uh, today we've got matches from StarCraft II Strategy and Overdosed Gaming. I almost said Overloaded Gaming, but I check-corrected <laughs> myself. Uh, these are two teams in the Master Grandmaster League of SC2 CTL, and uh, this is going to be quite an awesome match for you today. Absolutely. We've got a lot of great games coming up for you guys. They should be some pretty exciting ones. Uh, top tier players doing some really cool stuff, and we've got uh, actually some players that you may have heard of before, too. Indeedy. So with that, it's about time, so why don't we hop right into the first game. What do you say? That sounds like a great idea. All right, then. Game All right, in the lower right-hand corner, we have our green Terran, represented StarCraft strategy. It is Enix. He will be our Terran. And in the upper right-hand corner, we've got our Zerg friend of the day, representing Overdosed Gaming. It is Wildcard. So, Nick... Tell me, uh, what race do you play in StarCraft, as if I don't already know? <laughs> well, you know, I am a Zerg player. I'm not a very good Zerg player, but I enjoy Zerg. It's a lot of fun. Uh, they get to do a lot of cool things now that they weren't able to do before, necessarily, like making more roaches than you can ever imagine <laughs> being made in 10 minutes. So that's always fun. Everybody else hates it, but hey, it's kind of fun for me. And uh, Wingnut, what, what do you play I'm a Protoss player, and I, uh, I'm not as huge a fan of Zerg lately, but uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm getting used to it as these players start their game. It looks like Wildcard is going to be making some drones. Looks like the drone is coming out to head towards his natural, possibly, to uh, build his his hatch, or he's just going to go that's out and scout. That's looking like a scout. Yep. Yeah, it's looking like a scout. While Terran is putting down his barracks, Putting down a gas, looks like it's going to be an early Reaper opening from Terran, would be my guess. Now we've got Mr. Wildcard putting down his natural. Uh, this map is Echelon Waste. It's probably one of my favorite maps. Um, just the, the base placements are cool. You've got this third you can cut off here, and your natural is fairly easy to defend. It is a large ramp, but it's not the worst in the world. Looks like Wildcard is going to get in here before... Mm -hmm. Enix is able to build his supply depot to block him out. He's going to see that gas, and he's going to have probably a decent idea of what uh, NX is going to be doing here. Down goes the orbital command. Spawning pool did go down at about 15 for wildcard, so he's going to go for a bit of a macro opening. Uh, curious as to whether he's going to take a third or not. Probably not against Terran. It probably depends on if, oh, looks like that drone is going to get sandwiched there. Oh, he does a nice mineral walk to get out, though, so he's going to have that drone still available to do some scouting. Terran is mining three out of his gas, so he is going to be stacking up some gas early. And there goes the first Reaper out. Zerg just finished his gas. He's going to mine some of that to get some speed, probably. Looks like he's sitting at about 52. It was supply block for a moment, but that... Overlord did just pop. 
The Reaper's gonna find the scouting drone in the middle of the map because he's gonna get that kill, so that drone is gonna no longer exist in this world. Such a Wildcard shame. did have a heads up about that Reaper, but decides not really to do much in the way of defense for it. He's just gonna try and manhandle it with his drones. He does have a queen that's about two thirds done. It's gonna be popping out here any minute, so he's gonna use a little bit of micro actually to build a spore crawler with that drone that was half dead instead of letting it die. And he he did cancel it also, so that's a nifty play. Second Reaper headed across the map to continue the little bit of pressure against these lings. Not gonna be able to do a whole lot with just those lings as long as he doesn't pressure too far up into uh, into Zerg's base around those queens. He's gonna just... mm -hmm. And he wants to keep on creep with those Zerglings as they don't have speed just yet. He's gonna be able to keep a, a little bit of a speed advantage while on creep, but uh, as soon as those Reapers get off creep, uh, the lings aren't gonna be doing so great. The lings are running around trying to get a heads up on them, but Ended up losing one as the Reapers head into the main base. The Queen's right there to try and head him off, and they are running on out. The Lings are trying to cut him off, but decide against it. Two, uh, the speed is going down now. It's about half done. Uh, Reapers are going to continue going to heal up. Uh, Freedom SC2 says, cool overlay. It says, blue is up two games, though, or am I crazy? It does say blue is up two games. Let me just fix that. Whoopsie, thanks for the catch. It looks like Enix has put down a natural expansion, is turning into an orbital command. Those Reapers do go back to base. There's a bunker up in the front with a Marine in it, and we'll see if those Reapers end up heading in there. Right now they're just chilling. Hellion's coming out on the field out of that factory with the... Uh, looks like he built the reactor on the barracks and switched. Going to be going 1-1-1, old school. Mm -hmm. Double gas with expand coming down. Uh, do using those mules wisely. Looks like both of his command centers are extremely low energy. Third going down for Zerg. So what do you think uh, is going to be the tech choice of our Zergy buddy? You know, I think he's still waiting to see what ha happens here. Uh, I don't think he's necessarily made a decision just yet. Wants to play a little bit reactionary. He's running around with those lings. Trying to get some vision. Oh, looks like we're going to have some cloaked banshees coming out of Terran. Cloak has just mm -hmm. started and a banshee just started at the same time from his starport. This is a pretty classic 1-1-1. One -one -one. Reapers out of the, out of the barracks, uh, Hellions out of the factory, and then following it up with some banshees out of the starport. Wildcard is getting a bit of a bank in minerals. He hasn't really made a decision of what he wants to tech to. He's making a few more lings and some drones. So just macroing right now, still waiting to see what kind of comes out of Terran. He is mining zero gas at the moment, though. He has not put any of his drones back in gas after he finished speed. So he's going to be sticking low on ups for the moment. These Hellions are just going to rip through these Zerglings if they continue to push up, but they decide to go home. Macro hatch at the ramp. How about we see that? two macro hatches going down, so it looks like he's going to want to get lots of larva very quick. Now I'm wondering uh, what he's going to do against this cloak, though, because he does not have a layer. He does not have any spore crawlers at the moment. So that's going to be a little bit of a hard spot if he gets these banshees in here in cloaks, but he leaves them out to where these hellions and circlings are going to see it, so he knows what's coming. Now I'm going to wait to see if uh, he does choose to put down any spores. Looks like he's just going to keep poking at the hatch while the queen puts damage on. Now, Wildcard did have vision of that starport uh, down at the bottom with a, an overlord, so he did see things being produced. It's possible he even saw the banshees, but he didn't react to it. Now we do have three spore crawlers going down, one in each base. But if that banshee's going to try and focus on that a little bit, but he's going to move out for some reason. Uh, he's just he going to counterattack. He knows those lings can't really do much. Oh, there's a hole in the wall, Francis. The wings are going to come around, do a real ring around the rosy, trying to avoid those Hellions, but nice Try and placement. Them up. Nice placement with the Hellions, nice placement with the SCVs. Still exploding delay. that hole with all those lings. In the meantime, the Banshee has stopped doing anything, the one remaining that's living. This is gonna the second trouble. one comes in to try and do some damage, but he is not paying attention to it, and it is just taking some damage from that spine crawler, or spore crawler, rather. He's trying to do some damage to that queen, but he's going to end up taking some more damage, and he may end up losing that Banshee, he's trying and there to, it goes. He's trying to save his base at the moment, which isn't going so well. Those lings are still pouring in. Yeah, they sure are. Definitely, it, he's definitely utilizing this mass ling styles. He didn't really keep mining. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Did not keep mining gas, but he has put drones back into one of his gases, and now Wait, he's You need to switch the overlaid. Oh, you oh my gosh, it. what happened? What in the Sorry world? about that, folks. Thanks. Sorry. 
Oh, there you uh, go. Wow, this is going to be bad. Okay, so what happens is when I switch overlays, it changes the score. <laughs> so I'm going to have to change the hotkeys for the uh, for the overlay switching here. So Please be I... patient. This is still week one. Still, hey. still trying to get the kinks out. Where that is... second Banshee is very low on health. It tried to get a little pokes in, but he's running out now. Meanwhile, the Lings are still in the base of Enix. Banshees are trying to do some damage to clean that up, and now we see Hellions running in, trying to clean up the disparaged Lings, and he's moving them into action, trying to get the surrounds on those Hellions. He's going to get some, but he's not going to have enough Lings to do a whole lot of damage. He might get one. No, he doesn't. He did leave those Lings idle for quite a while. I was surprised that he didn't he sure really did. do anything with those. So it looks like we're going to taper off a little bit. He is building 48 more Zerglings right now. And we see the uh, the range uh, uh, upgrade. Oh. Here comes all the Zerglings. He's going to get us around on these Hellions, and he's going to get them, and he's probably going to be able to clean this up. But he's using only half of his Zerglings at the moment. The other half are kind of standing still in the back. Mass, quick, hurry, build the wall, troops. Build the wall. <laughs> and those Lings are on their death march. They just want to kill everything. Oh, leaves another hole in the another wall hole. still. Whoops. Boom goes the dynamite. The SCV's try back into the main, trying to save as many of those as he can. He's got to get that door up, though, if he wants to save them. There's a Viking over here picking away at this Overlord, but that's the least of his concerns at the moment. Cancels yeah. all the supply depots going down in the front. Decides to focus on that command center, which lifts up. The one Banshee's still doing his best to do some damage to these Zerglings. Wildcard's decided to go crazy on his tech now. He's got a Roach Ward, he's got a Baneling Nest, he's got a Spire, he's got a Hydralisk then. <laughs> He's getting pneumatized carapace. He's getting Zerg attack missiles. Literally he's everything. Ground carapace. He's getting just everything. He realizes he's got a bank. He's got a heavy command in this game. He's just going to do whatever he wants. In the meantime, Terran is trying to keep it together by getting his up, his one one ups, making more Marines, making more Hellions, just trying to keep these Lings at bay, trying to reestablish his natural. Burrow even coming down. He's going to be using all of the tech paths today. All of the tech paths. So it looks like in the units tab, uh, Zerg is down at the units count right now. He's only got four Zerglings, 72 drones though. He's not going to need to make any more of those. Uh, so he is going to macro up with all these Whoa, different tech that was units. a lot of cancels. I don't know if you saw yeah, that. He canceled did, a lot of drones. I did see. Well, like I was saying, he doesn't need any more drones now. He's got 70, so at most he only needs a couple. But I'm guessing that was probably a hotkey misclick, possibly? It's possible. Banshee poking away at a fourth base down here. It's probably going to end up having to be canceled. Uh, Roaches and Zerglings moving across the map. They're going to try and put the death blow on there as the Marines and Hellion try and take down the rocks to get access to Terran's third base here. The wall is once again going up, but I doubt it's going to... Oh, look at the Banelings! That wall is not going to make a difference, my friend, because those Banelings are going to blow up everything. Well, the wall's not even finished yet, so he doesn't even need them. No, nope, he might as well just not bother with it. How much you want to bet there's a hole in it? <laughs> well, I think he's learned from his previous mistakes. <laughs> there goes all those supply depots. There goes the wall. All these roaches are going to seal the deal. He does have some... I thought he was making some hydras, but I guess he must not have decided it. There is a couple hydras, so lifting off the buildings is only going to hold things going for so long. Last wave of marines comes in to try and clean this up. There goes the stem. There's just not enough damage output from Terran to really make that much of a difference. Oh, Baneling hits, take out what's left, and here come the SCVs trying to do something about these Roaches that seem impenetrable, and now they get burrowed. Oh, so nice there goes burrow. the scan. He's just holding on for dear life now as he continues to try and find a way to get a grip of this game, which has gotten away from him in a really bad way at the moment. Roach is going after the command center. The Banshee coming in cloaked doesn't really matter. It's going to pick away at the Roaches. So numbers are dwindling, but he's going to have a lot more coming across the map. Oh, making... those Banshees were accidentally attacking his uh, his orbital command instead of the Roaches there. Whoops. Gets outside of that scan range and burrows up so he can heal those Banshees. He can do this all day because there's only so much scan energy going to be left. Mm -hmm. He's going to get some kills there, though. Yep. But Looking here comes the else. next wave. It's going to be Hydras, Hydras, and some more Hydras. But there are a couple mines there, but they've already spent their shots. They will not be of use anymore. 2-2 two, two upgrades coming down for those Hydras, as well as more bases. 
or wild card. Well, that fourth did end up getting cleaned up, so he's just re-expanding or remaking his fourth. And in come Lings and Hydras. The cavalry has arrived. Ling's gonna just surround everything as the Hydras do some damage here. Those Banshees are still a problem for Wildcard. He needs to get some kind of deck here, but and there's NX the GG. GGs, and that is gonna be the end of that game. What a great game. That was just Zerg in control, playing that Swarm style that everyone seems to really love these days. Yep. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can change some hotkeys here real quick so that I can <laughs> not be changing the score every time I switch every time I switch uh, screens here. So give me one second here. Nick, uh, do you you want to give us a little bit of the background on uh, on Enix there? Since yeah, he's, sure. It was so, one game up, and now he's out, but might as well tell everybody about him a little bit. Yeah, so we have been uh, in contact with some of the team captains trying to get a little bit of bios uh, on our players, trying to allow you guys to get to know them a little bit more, uh, to have a little, you know, develop fan bases and understand the players that you're watching today. Uh, so uh, Enix is a 17-year-old. He was born in South Korea. He's half Korean, half Canadian. Uh, I think he, belie he I believe he lives in Canada now. Uh, so he started playing Brood War when he was age four. They really uh, start training him young <laughs> over there, apparently. Uh, so he played uh, Protoss and Wings of Liberty, but decided to switch to Terran in Heart of the Swarm. And... Uh, he used to be a member of Clan Overdose, which is the opposing team that Wildcard was playing for, and apparently that is why the captain chose to play him first, was that they used to be teammates with the other team. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't seem to <laughs> phase the uh, the Overdose gaming team too much, at least not Wildcard, as he was able to have a commanding game there and uh, pull ahead 1-0 for SCS over OD. If you want to go ahead and...